From a massive tornado in Canada that crossed right in front of these storm chasers, and a rare water spout in Amsterdam that took the whole city by surprise, to a terrifying video of a close-range twister as it passed through rural Nebraska, and the unbelievable moment a storm chaser captured a multi-vortex tornado on film. Here are seven tornado videos that are on another level. Amsterdam is the capital and the largest city in the Netherlands. It's home to about 2.4 million people in the greater metro area. Locals call it the Venice of the North due to the many canals flowing through the city. August 9th of 2019 was a rainy day in Amsterdam. A local couple had just returned from the city and had made their way up to their seventh floor apartment. That's when the husband noticed some strange clouds forming over the river. He quickly realized that this was no rainstorm when a rare European tornado touched down over the water. Kijk, kijk, hij raakt de grond bijna. Hij raakt bijna de grond. Kijk, 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 hij raakt. Kijk, daar gaat hij. Jezus, kijk dan. Daar is een tornado toe. Moet je zien. Wat de f***. Ja, een tornado. Wat de f***. According to reports, this was one of two tornadoes to touch down that day. Both spawned from a cold front moving across Europe at the time, with the other tornado forming over southern Luxembourg. From what we can gather, the Luxembourg storm was significantly stronger than this twister in Amsterdam. Technically, tornadoes can and have occurred on every continent except Antarctica. However, where the United States sees about 1,200 annual storms, all of Europe only sees 300. Of the European nations, most of these tornadoes occur in the UK. Thankfully, this rare Amsterdam tornado didn't cause any injuries or significant damage. On July 19th of 2018, during the afternoon and early evening, a freak tornado outbreak swept through central Iowa. Of the 69 confirmed storms all year, 21 of them touched down within a span of a few hours. One of them was a powerful EF-3 that caused extensive damage in the meatpacking city of Marshalltown. The storm touched down close to 4.30 in the afternoon. It developed several miles northwest of the city, where one resident storm chaser was waiting with his camera. Watch how a picture-perfect day in middle America quickly turns into a hellish nightmare. Our storm chaser did his best to keep up as the tornado moves over the local hospital. His camera inadvertently records some of the most significant damage it caused. See this building? That's the Marshall County Courthouse. There used to be a spire and crucifix on top. The tornado decided to redecorate a bit. Anyway, let's get back to the footage.
Our cameraman wants to keep following the tornado, but several downed trees have turned his only path into a dead end. He was about to learn how quickly these kinds of storms can change direction. Our cameraman wisely called the chase off once the tornado moved closer to him. The footage cut before he escaped, but it looked like he was ready to throw his truck in reverse. According to reports, wind speeds topped 145 miles per hour as the tornado moved through the city. In addition to the courthouse spire, it damaged the Unity Point Hospital, destroyed several homes, and impacted many historic buildings. Here, you can see water spewing from the courthouse roof. When the spire fell, it apparently ruptured the sprinkler system. While the outside of the building was mostly intact, the east wing was flooded with 16,000 gallons of water. US 30 is a major east-west highway spanning about 330 miles across Iowa. It begins in the Missouri River in Blair, Nebraska, and ends at the Mississippi River in Clinton, Iowa. It'll take you south of Cedar Rapids, north of Des Moines, and spit you out somewhere northeast of Omaha. On May 21st of 2024, a highway camera on US 30 near the small town of Nevada captured a powerful tornado moving across the landscape. Our camera tried holding on as long as it could, but Mother Nature simply proved too strong. All seems normal as traffic approaches. Then the camera starts to rumble, and road signs begin shaking and rattling. A semi-truck appears, heading right toward the storm. The driver wisely hits the brakes and stops moments before things go from bad to worse. The tornado crosses from left to right. The small car heading toward us narrowly makes it out in time. That's when an oil tanker risks it all for an on-time delivery. We lose the driver's taillights as the storm passes over his truck. The road signs fall over, and we lose our highway camera moments later. According to the National Weather Service, this was one of two EF2 tornadoes to strike near Nevada, Iowa. It grew to be about a thousand yards wide, with wind speeds upwards of 135 miles per hour. While nobody lost their lives, many did lose their homes and livelihoods. Bradshaw, Nebraska is a small village in York County, roughly 115 miles west of Omaha. It's home to about 300 people and has seen several strong tornadoes in its 145-year history. Twelve people perished during the storm of 1890. Then, in 1964, the first and only F5 tornado nearly wiped the village off the map. On June 20th of 2011, 12 confirmed storms spawned during a tornado outbreak over the Hastings County Warning Area. It was the most active tornado day in three years. Thankfully, none of the storms exceed EF3 intensity. One of them was an EF2 that touched down near Highway 34, west of Bradshaw. That's where Ben Holcomb and his storm chasing team were waiting with their cameras, ready to chase this storm until the bitter end. They missed the tower, just barely. is massive! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the base of that thing! Look at an inflow! The storm narrowly misses the electrical tower, which made our storm chasing team worry about the power lines overhead. They ultimately decide to head back west as the tornado tracks toward a group of trees.
another SD card. The tornado seems to be circling them now as it picks up strength and crosses the road. Still worried about the power lines, they hop back in the car and move it off the road. Power pulls down in the street. Here comes the power lines. Our storm chasers can hardly contain themselves. It's rare to see a tornado this up close and personal. Being the adrenaline junkies they are, these guys only wanted more. They hopped back in the car and traveled northeast to pick the storm back up. They stepped on the gas, hoping to catch the storm before it moved away or they ran out of SD cards. Lucky for them, they were able to get one last shot before it vanished forever. According to damage reports, the tornado tracked a 15-mile path between Bradshaw and the nearby village of Polk. It grew to be about a quarter mile wide, and wind speeds reached about 130 miles per hour. In the 20 minutes it was on the ground, it damaged one home and downed 40 power poles. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. Verdon, Manitoba is a small town in central Canada, about an hour north of the U.S. border. It used to be a farming town in the 19th century, but everything changed after they discovered oil in the 1950s. Ever since then, Verdon has been known as the oil capital of Manitoba. On August 7th of 2020, those oil fields came under fire when a powerful EF3 tornado ripped through Verdon. It touched down around 8 p.m. near Highway 83, where Jordan Carruthers and his storm-chasing team were waiting with their gear and cameras. They captured the stunning moment when this twister finally came down from the clouds. It's on the ground. Yeah. Holy fuck. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Guys. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wow. Holy crap! Up until recently, it was believed that Canada only had about 60 tornadoes each year. Technically, that would make them second in the world, only behind the United States, which has about 1,200 annual twisters. Scientists recently learned that Canada actually has about 150 storms each year, with most of them occurring in remote areas where nobody lives. As the saying goes, if a tornado touches down in nowhere Canada and nobody's around to see it, does it make a sound? Verdon might be a small town, but plenty of people were around to see this one. Oh 
my god! Jordan and his team watched the storm until it dissipated behind some trees. While it looks like a rural area, the tornado did cause extensive damage to a farm and two vehicles. One person was injured, and two sadly lost their lives. The tornado itself only lasted between 10 and 15 minutes. It reached wind speeds upwards of 161 miles per hour. At first, officials thought it was only an EF2. But after taking another look at the damage, they realized it was an EF-3. On June 18th of 2014, a powerful EF-4 tornado spawned southeast of Lane, South Dakota. It traveled north toward Alpena, a small town on the north of Gerald County. At the time, about 300 people lived in the area. This number likely doubled as storm chasers tracked the storm and moved into town. One of them, Shailen Phillips, captured this rare moment on camera. Watch how the multiple vortices dance around each other. This was only a quick snippet of a tornado that had been on the ground for over 40 minutes. The multiple vortexes you see are basically smaller tornadoes that spawn off the larger system and rotate around it. They are incredible to witness, but they can also be extremely destructive. The tornado went on to damage two farms and one family's home. Thankfully, the family heard the tornado warning and was hunkered in the basement when it moved overhead. In the end, it tracked an 11-mile path from Lane to Alpena, growing to about half a mile wide with wind speeds upwards of 170 miles per hour. Fairdale, Illinois is a small township in DeKalb County, home to about 150 people. They've seen their fair share of storms over the years, but nothing could have prepared them for what happened on April 9th of 2015. The Storm Prediction Center had been tracking a severe weather system since April 4th. According to their calculations, a vast stretch of land between southeastern Oklahoma and northeastern Illinois was at risk of a powerful tornado. By midday on April 9th, there was a 10% chance that an EF2 or higher tornado could strike in northern Illinois. By that evening, there was a 100% chance. Hello, people. Uh -huh. A little late. Oh, look at this go right to that farm. <gasps> it's moving a little bit east, but basically it's going it straight any closer. north. Okay, hold on. I got a peep. It's not going any closer. No. Okay, I need to go back out because it was really bad. Oh my god. No, there's not. The sky behind is clear. It's pretty good. Okay. 
Now it's really a rip. Now it's turning a little bit east. Oh, oh my it's... God, Bonnie. Well, I was like, yeah, Bonnie. Maple Bonnie Arts. Bernardin. I hope you're okay. I think, oh, shit. Sorry. Stinking, I don't know what. Yeah, it's incredible. That's a hell of a that's a hell of a tornado. Change directions. It's going south now, it's going east. No, it's going north. It's going straight east. It was going north. It was going, yeah, it was going north. Now it's going east. Oh my god. I backed up on it. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep going. This is awesome. While our couple was perfectly safe in their car, those in the tornado's path weren't so lucky. It devastated the town of Fairdale, destroying several homes and farmsteads. It tossed vehicles around like toys and uprooted trees like pesky weeds. Officially rated as an EF4, this tornado hit wind speeds upwards of 200 miles per hour. It grew to be about 700 yards wide and tracked a 30-mile path while on the ground for 40 minutes. In the aftermath, the town of Fairdale came together to treat the wounded and begin cleaning up. The tornado may have caused $19 million worth of damage, but it wasn't about to break this little township's spirit. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.